I'm just so excited. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to talk about why is now a good time to start talking about sports? Well, hockey's in preseason, basketball's in preseason, baseball's going on right now, and football's going on right now. So no better time to talk about sports than when sports are already in motion or just about to get in motion. So sports, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about, you know, very, very entry level all the way up to a little bit more complicated and complex shows. Um, and we're, we're, we're just going to do an overview. Uh, I will throw it out there, though. If you have any questions about anything that we talk about today, you can contact us at 800-323-2325, and you can reach me directly at extension 1111. Uh, I am a video production specialist, and I can answer most, if not all, of your questions on any of these products since we won't be going into uh, a super deep dive into them or a broad overview. So what do you need for your live sports production? And first and foremost is you need to be able to stream and record your games. Uh, if you want to you know, up the ante a little bit, you can add more cameras for multiple camera angles, up a little bit more, add some branding, some graphics up a little bit more, add a scoreboard, and lastly, to be really professional, you're really gonna wanna look into adding instant replay to uh, your productions. And we're gonna talk about uh, each, each one of these uh, in a little bit more depth. So, of course, you need to be able to stream and record your games, and lots of schools are upping their production uh, values, and you can get things starting out as simple as a camera or a switcher, um, and you can get into more complicated things like uh, turnkey systems and you know having multiple cameras on your network, multiple systems on your network. Uh, but the, the key is you need to have a camera, you need to have a switcher, you need to have an encoder. Um, you can get away without having a switcher if you only have one camera, but at the very minimum, you do need a camera and an encoder. And so to start that off, the very most basic way that you can do that is camera encoder. And it, all an encoder is, by the way, is it's just something that sends a, uh, a video signal to a CDN, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or even a custom RTMP of your choice. So if you wanted to send the video feed directly to your school's website, you can use a custom RTMP. So the, you can use something like the LiveView Solo in order to do that. Now, the Live View Solo takes in either an SDI or an HDMI uh, video feed and then sends it to a CDN of your choice wirelessly. And the great thing about the Live View Solo is it comes with two USB modems that you can plug into it to allow you to bring your internet anywhere you are because it has uh, cellular modems. Uh, those USB modems are cellular. And what LiveView does is it combines those two cell phone signals into one giant pipe to make sure that you have a reliable connection to the internet pretty much wherever you are. And with it being able to take in a feed from any SDI or HDMI input, that allows you to get a little bit more complicated. So uh, a little bit more involved. If you wanted to have multiple cameras connected to a switcher, and then connect the switcher output to the live view, that's a way that you can get multiple cameras in. Now, in this example here, we're actually talking about a Roland VH, VH1 Plus, a one, or Roland V1 HD Plus, excuse me, um, which allows you to switch between up to four cameras, doesn't allow you to have any graphics or anything, but still upping that production value a little bit by adding multiple cameras and multiple camera angles to your production. And again, you just take the HDMI feed out of your uh, switcher and you plug it into the uh, Live View Solo. Now, again, let's, let's talk about adding multiple cameras to a turnkey system. Essentially, the Yolo Box Pro is an all-in-one switcher and encoder. Now, the Yolo Box Pro allows you to plug in up to three HDMI uh, cameras and one USB camera. So that's really great on its own. It lets you do your switching between multiple cameras and will stream to up to two destinations at once. 
Uh, but not only that, you can add graphics to this. You can add scoreboards to this. You can add transitions to this. Um, the Yellow Box Pro is extremely customizable and really takes your production uh, from you know beginner to professional really simply. So now we're gonna now we're talking about multi-camera uh, layouts. So let's talk about some in practice. Now, like I said, I had some experience in basketball specifically because I operated our Jimmy Jib. Now, our Jimmy Jib was our master camera, which is basically that camera that you see in the middle of the court. Now, that middle of the court or master shot is your master shot. It's going to be your backup. It's going to be your main shot. And what you're going to do with that is you're going to get that as high up as you can because you want to be able to establish the, the field or the court or wherever you are. And uh, so your audience can follow along of the surrounding area of the ball. And then you as the camera operator, you can also follow the ball or what's important a lot more easier because it's going to be a wide shot. So that's going to be your main camera. Then you have your hero cam either on the left or right doesn't really matter that hero cam is going to try and focus in or zoom in on the ball the person with the ball or that nice shot and that's going to be the the you know instant replay shot or that's going to be the shot that you cut away to when there is something important but because it's going to be a lot tighter there is a good chance that it might not be in focus the ball gets thrown out of the frame but you always have your master shot to rely back on. Now, the two cameras to the sides, uh, at, at least in our production, what we did was we actually mounted two small cameras to the back of the backboard. And that worked out really well because a lot of basketball backboards are clear. So you can have the camera behind the backboard pointing at the court. And not only will you see the hoop in the foreground, but you might see the free throw line or the three point line in the background and see the player throw the ball and it gives a really cool perspective of the ball coming towards the camera and then you know either going into the hoop or not. Uh, so that's just a really cool uh, way to get more cameras in there, more uh, production value into your production. And the great thing about mounting it on the back of the backboard is you don't ever have to worry about the, the camera getting hit by the ball because it's behind the backboard. If anything, the ball is gonna hit the backboard. That's what it's designed to do. So really cool camera angle and you don't have to worry about damaging any equipment oh before you know i could talk about it on this slide actually so baseball is a little bit different so for baseball you're going to want to have your two cameras on the sides following your first base and your third base line be able to you know pan out into the outfield and see what's going on in the outfield now the camera that's behind the home plate that's actually going to be pointed at your pitcher uh, so you can get a nice uh, view of your pitcher who's going to be looking right at the camera. It's not going to be focusing on the batter. It's going to be focusing on what's in the background, not the foreground. And it's going to be the same thing with that camera that's all the way out in the outfield. That camera in the outfield is going to, going to be zoomed in all the way on the batter. So you see the front of the batter. Now, what you can do with that outfield shot is also when the batter swings, if they hit the ball, you can zoom out with that outfield camera and be able to see everything that's going on, all the moves that are happening uh, on the field. And you can try and even follow that ball if you, if you got the skills. Uh, I will say it is pretty hard, but can be very rewarding if you are able to do it. Check it out. You know, when you're watching the MLB games and they're following that ball, that's usually the camera that's following that ball. So this is going to be for any, basically any um, rectangular sports field. So whether it's soccer, football, hockey, uh, trying to think lacrosse is another one. It's going to be very similar to your basketball court The uh, with having your master in the middle, directly in the middle, raised high up, pointing at the field, giving you a nice wide angle, give you a lot of uh, explanation of where everyone is a lot of surrounding area. Then you have your hero cam focusing on the, the ball in particular. And then these two sh cameras on the sides, because you don't have that backboard that's gonna protect your ball, you're gonna wanna keep, uh, protect your camera, sorry. You're gonna wanna keep the cameras off of the field 
uh, for these types of games and put them off uh, to the sides. And one thing I wanted to kind of talk about is, yes, you're going to want to have the camera that's on the right side of the field follow all of the action that is on the right side of the field. So if you have somebody, you know, your players are over here on the right side of the field, you're going to want to have this camera pointed at them uh, so you can see their fronts. But say someone's over here and they steal the ball and they start going back that way, you still have that camera over there. So that camera, even though it's on the opposite side of the field, you're going to want to have that camera pointed over here. So just in case somebody steals the ball or, you know, does a slap shot with the hockey stick, they have that shot and they can follow the return or, you know, the interception, whatever it may be, back to that side of the field. So just because the camera is not right next to your subject does not mean that you shouldn't be following it. So these are just some some basic layouts and some really cool camera shots that you can get with, you know, a three or four camera setup. Let's talk about some of the other uh, products and technology. So we talked about this a, a little bit briefly. Uh, PTZ cameras, which stands for pan, tilt, zoom. There are tons of different um, companies that are making PTZ cameras. And like I said, we're not going to go into any real specifics here, but just know that we have cameras like Bird Dog, New Tech makes PTZ cameras, Panasonic makes PTZ cameras, PTZ Optics makes PTZ cameras. Tons of different companies make the PTZ cameras, and we would be glad to get on a phone call with you and talk about all of the differences and which one would fit in your workflow. So again, give us a call, 800-323-2325. My direct extension is 1111. So these are this is a kind of a, a, a pretty big tech tip. And I will admit, uh, throughout my years, I had to learn this the hard way. You're going to want to keep your cameras on one side of the field, except for baseball. Baseball is the exception because you're going to have that one camera all the way behind the pitcher. So, but for every other sport, you're going to want to keep the cameras on one side of the field. Now, this is called the rule of 180 degrees. Now, in film, this helps keep orientation well for your audience members. If you have, uh, imagine a camera can spin 360 degrees if it's on a tripod. You're going to want to keep the cameras all on one side of 180 degrees. That way your perspective is always the same and your audience member won't get lost. If you have one camera on this side of the field and another camera on that side of the field, when you cut between them, they're going to, they're going to be pointing the wrong ways. You know, the player's going to be running this way on one camera, but he's going to be running that way on the other because he's on the wrong side of the 180 degree rule, and that can get very confusing for an audience member. So just remember, keep all of your cameras on one side of the field, except for baseball. Now we're going to talk about NDI technology. Now a lot of these PTZ cameras, and even some uh, handy cams, and even some monitors now, like the Zato here, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, allow for you to use NDI and incorporate it into your workflows. Now, the great thing about NDI is it's all over IP and a lot of schools are increasing their ability to do uh, IP workflows. Um, and this will allow you to not only be able to view uh, a video feed, but you can provide power to BTZ cameras, you can provide control to BTZ cameras all from one place. You can have you know, your base of operations be in a different building so long as they're all on the same network you can control, see, and power your cameras from one location. And going back to, you know, I only graduated college in 2017, uh, but when we were building that, we were all SDI hardwire, and we basically had to have our base of operations in the same room as the court and our studio, because we had to be, you know, within a couple hundred feet of all of our cameras and our you know, actors, not actors, uh, commentators, things like that. With NDI, you can be in a different room. You can be in a different building as long as you're still on the same network. So it just really expands the possibilities of a production like this, makes it a lot easier to understand, set up, and uh, more accessible. So we talked about this a little bit earlier with the Yolo Box Pro, which is kind of a, a turnkey production system. But really, the, the systems on this screen are really turnkey production systems. Now, a P2 
turnkey production system is basically something that does your switching and encoding all in one. Um, you know, it already has the software built in. It has hardware ports on the back that are specifically designed for production. Uh, for example, the TriCaster Mini X has four HDMI ports on the back that can do up to 4K 30 uh, FPS, but then it also has four mini display port out so you can send them to confidence monitors. You can send it to uh, if the, the person that's doing your editing can have two monitors. As a matter of fact, we use a TriCaster here in our studio and we have three monitors hooked up to it. And then we have one, one of those ports going out to a confidence monitor, which is what I'm actually staring at right now. So these things are built for video production. You have the things like the new tech TriCaster. There's a couple different versions of the TriCaster. There's the Wirecast Gear 3s that is uh, built by Telestream. And what's really cool about those is they're all under $10,000 and there's four flavors to choose from. And basically you ask yourself two questions. Do you need HD? Do you need 4K? Once you have the answer to that, you ask yourself, do you need HDMI or do you need SDI? And that's it. Making it really easy for you. And all of the, uh, excuse me, the Wirecast Gear 3s are less than $10,000. <clears> And then also, like I said, they, they do HDMI or SDI, but they all, all of these devices are NDI compatible as well. You just need to have a network switch to be able to have multiple uh, devices on your network. And as a matter of fact, uh, that was not an intentional plug, but good job on Adam for having that lower third ready to go. That's actually one of our number one solutions for um, NDI workflows is to get a network switch. Uh, and specifically the Netgear M4250 line. Uh, we just did a show, I think two weeks ago, all about the Netgear M4250 line. So definitely make sure that you check that out. Unintentional plug. <laughs> there also is the Epifan Pearl family. Uh, next week, uh, Gary will be talking with Matt Frazier from Epifan, talking about one of their new uh, software programs called Epifan Connect. So I don't really wanna talk too much about the Epifan family right now, Tune in next week, you'll get a full uh, actual demonstration of how Epifan Connect works. All right, we kind of talked about this with the basketball and the uh, baseball. How do you get your scoreboard into your production? Because again, that's gonna make your production look a lot more professional. If you only have one camera and have somebody talking into the camera and saying, oh, the score is this, this. That's not great, that's not great. Your audience is gonna you know, lose attention pretty quickly so there's a couple ways that you can bring in a scoreboard to your production. And the easiest way to do it is point a camera right at your scoreboard and do a picture in picture. Or if you don't have the ability to do that, you know, have a camera that's always pointed at the scoreboard and be able to cut to that. So if you're using that Roland switcher and you have two cameras, you have one camera that's following everything on the field and you have another camera that's pointed directly at the scoreboard, Occasionally, especially when a, a point is scored, you can just cut right to that scoreboard. Now, a lot of the professional scoreboards will actually have an output that you can plug in directly to uh, one of these turnkey systems to allow you to uh, automatically have an overlay of a real-time uh, score and time clock. And um, a lot of these devices too, uh, the Yellow Box Pro, the Wirecast, the TriCaster, they have scoreboards built into them that, so that even if you can't get uh, it automatically from your uh, scoreboard, your physical scoreboard, you can have somebody manually type in the numbers and update it uh, as points are scored. Uh, that's actually one thing that's really cool about the Yolo Box Pro. Uh, it has a really robust uh, editing program for the, um, the, the, the scoreboard inside of it, allowing you to change the font and the colors to make it so it's really personalized towards your school or your opponent's uh, colors. It's just really cool. And then lastly, like I said, uh, the, the way to really make your production value uh, skyrocket is to add an instant replay. Uh, going back to that basketball uh, example, if somebody does a really cool slam dunk, you have it in your, you know, your wide master shot, but you still had it on that backboard camera, well, now you can do an instant replay 
record that clip, play it back, play it back in nice slow motion, and you see that swoosh, it's really cool. It makes your production look huge, and people love shots like that. So not only is it having the ability to do instant replay, but knowing where to place your cameras and when to use uh, that feature. And instant replays can be uh, a little bit um, frightening at first. And I do just want to say that both Roland and NewTek have uh, courses or, you know, tutorial videos on their website. Specifically, NewTek has like a 10 hour long course that is specifically dedicated to the NewTek 3Play 3P1 system. And it just really goes into a deep dive of how to use it and how to incorporate it into your workflow. And then at the end of the day, if you do take that course, you can get certified in it. So then you can go up to your school board and say, hey, I am uh, three, play, three play, three P one uh, certified. And then you can teach your students that. It's just an all around uh, good workflow. I don't, I don't know how else to say it, um, but yeah. So just one, two, three, not one. We're gonna talk about three little tech tips before we uh, end the show. And the first one is that in order to get slow motion, this, this is actually a little bit misleading. So the way that slow motion works is that you wanna be able to shoot at a higher frame rate and then play it back at a slower frame rate. So theoretically you could do um, slow motion by shooting at 60 FPS and then streaming at 30 FPS. And then when you play back your video at 60, your stream will be slowed down because it's playing at uh, 30 FPS. But when you're doing sports in general, you want to be using high FPSs as your baseline, what you're streaming at. So in most sports productions, you're actually streaming at 60 FPS. So if you wanna be able to do slow motion with a sports production, you should really be shooting your cameras at 120, 120 frames per second to then be able to play it on a 60, F, uh, 60 FPS timeline which will make it look uh, slow down. Well, it will be slow down and not look slow down. <clears throat> we talked about this a little bit too, adding sports and graph, uh, adding your graphics and incorporating team logos and colors will make your broadcast look more professional. Going back to the Yolo Box Pro, with you being able to change the color and the font of uh, your team's side of the scoreboard, that makes you stand out. It's not just a generic uh, scoreboard. It's personalized to your team, it's personalized to your opponent's team, and it just makes you stand out and appear more professionalized. Uh, at the same time, you can pull up lower thirds, you can pull up uh, graphics, you can pull up, you know, a PNG of your school logo, you can even, you know, make little videos, whatever you want to do to be able to, you know, just up the production value. Uh, and really, like I said, five, seven years ago when I was in college, this stuff was a little bit more, uh, confusing, a little bit more uh, hard to pull off, but now all of these you know, turnkey production systems make it super easy and super streamlined uh, to do this. And then lastly, uh, you don't, in order to have commentators in a production, you don't need to have a studio, you don't need to have tons of lights and, and, and stuff like that. All you really need is a USB webcam and a microphone. That's all you, you need because when you think about it, even when you're watching the MLB or the NFL, they hardly ever cut to the commentators. What they're doing is they're just taking their audio. So if you have just a simple shot to cut away to, if you need to, you have it, but it's really more important to have the audio and that, that's super easy. You just plug in a microphone to whatever your production system is and you're, you're ready to go. You have a commentator and that can be another thing that just takes your you know, your production from 10 to 11. So that is pretty much all that I have. Uh, this has been, like I said, just a really quick overview of everything that you would need in order to do uh, sports productions in a school setting. Uh, again, my name is James Frasca. I'm a video production specialist here. Um, you can give us a call at 800-323-2325. Uh, my extension is 1111. Uh, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, 
And like I said, next week, Gary will be here to talk about Epifan Connect. And we are very excited to talk about that. Um, that's pretty much all I have. So Gary's traditional peace. Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.